Do you want to protect your network and your smart home from intruders? Want to protect your smart home network using tools normally only available to businesses? Well, stay tuned and I'm going to show you how to do this. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we will talk about how to use Trend Micro's home network security device to protect your smart home network. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. Now, here's what we're going to be covering in this video. First, what is Trend Micro's h &S? And there's actually two separate product offerings. We're going to first go over the software piece of it, because this may do just what you need. But if you want to take it to the next level, then what you'll want to do is look at the hardware component, which is the home network security device, which works hand in hand with the two. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Well, first thing we're going to cover is what is the home network security product and it's actually two different pieces first is going to be we'll show you is going to be what's on the smartphone and what this will do is kind of tell you where things are at that point in time you then can go to the adding the home network security uh, component which is going to get you it's a hardware device that works in concert with the software piece on your smartphone and you're going to hear terms such as IPS, IDS, and what this does. This box sits on your network, plugs into a hardwire connection. It does not have wireless, which really for this, you, you don't want wireless. And gives you a little card to get started. And bless their little hearts, they send you a network cable as well as the uh, proverbial wall board. And I'm glad they send one that is got everything ready to go now on the back of the box this is what's going to give you a good idea of what it's capable of doing so this is it's a little bit of everything you, you've turned the terms ips okay that's intrusion prevention sensor that's what's going to tell you what is possibly going on on the network and in some cases not all but some cases be able to step in and stop it it also gives you an idea of if there's a problem that you, unless you're looking at it right at it at that point in time then you're going to have a little bit of a challenge to get this up and running so first let's go ahead and get to the software piece then we'll get the hardware piece running and then you can have a pretty good picture of what you're looking at at that point well to save a little bit of time i've gone ahead and downloaded the Trend Home Network Security software. And it says station, that's the hardware piece that we saw just a little bit ago. So I'm gonna say scan without station. And we, of course, because of lawyers, you gotta accept the agreement. And it says you gotta accept another agreement. And we're gonna say in terms of accessing location only while using the app. That's pretty much my standard answer on this because I don't want a bunch of things scanning and knowing where I am all the time. So we'll say scan now. And it's first going to go out and identify the number of devices on the network and then it will sit there and count down to as it fingerprints and gathers whatever information it's going to about the device. Some it will get through quicker than it will others. But on something like this, I do not want it to rush. And even if you don't get the home network security station hardware portion or hardware device, this is something you probably ought to run your network, well, absolute bare minimum once a month. And I would probably run it once every week or so, depending on what you've been doing on the network, what changes have been going on. And if you've got friends coming over and they're using your network, you better believe 
that I'm going to be pulling a scan while they're there because unless you've got their wireless segmented off to something else, you might be in for a very rude awakening. Not that I'm paranoid, but would rather err on the side of caution. Okay, as you can tell, this one took a while. I did speed up one part of the video so that it would not keep you hanging out there so long. Now, I actually stopped it and started again around device number 10 because I thought it had hung because everything that I was seeing said that it did. And I even uninstalled, reinstalled the program and it's just, there's one device and I wish I knew which one it was that was uh, causing that kind of issue. Now it does say out of 36 devices, it did find one vulnerability. So we'll tap on one found. This is where I wish it would actually tell you the device. It says router. Well, I'm assuming that that means my firewall, but some devices, if they've got multiple interfaces, might get misdiagnosed for being a router when they're really not. So this is just a matter, it, you know, it just tells you there's a problem but kind of leaves it up to you to fix it. I mean, you can look up the, the uh, common vulnerability items mentioned there and then on another scan should take care of the problem. Notice I said should. Sometimes there may be false positives, but that's where once you learn what's normal for your network, then you'll have a better idea of how to handle it. Now we'll get on to actually adding the hardware component and let's see what differences this makes. So if we go settings and pair with station, this is where I was looking for to make things work a little bit easier. So pair with station and we'll accept and continue, accept and continue, connect to router and plug in. All right, that means it wants to see it on the network before it gets started. I'm gonna bring the handy dandy Trend Micro security box over here. We will plug in the network cable, the power, and we should see a light. Okay, got a light right there. It turns green. Okay, there we go. It's come on solid. So let's bring it back over here and we'll say next. Okay, had to go back to the email to find the pairing code that I got because you, you, when you get this, you get a year's service out of it before you have to start renewing. So we should. Well, it's plugged into the port. Now it's gone back to flashing, so let's... It was just a matter of timing. It had to go through through its part of the process. So now we will go ahead and it is still blinking, as you can see, but at least it did pair within the app. So we'll get the account created and then we can move on. All right, well, after jumping through a few hoops, we've now got everything in place so we're going to tap on scan the network and we'll see what differently that this does okay we'll add okay view devices okay so this is where it's just going to take a little bit of time to go through and figure out as it, it's going to have to learn the uh the networks or learn the network rather and we'll come back and revisit this one in a little while now at this point fast forward about a little over two weeks from when the rest of that video was shot because I knew I needed to give this a little bit of time to get settled in and it's still learning things, but I want you to see that it's not going to be an overnight process and there's still going to be some adjusting. So let's switch over to the smartphone. And this is one of two things I will say. I, I wish they had some sort of web interface. They don't, you have to be on a smartphone. Okay. That's just the direction they're taking at this point. Hopefully, they see this video, they may uh, decide that they might want to do a, an additional option. Now, this is what it's going to look like after about, about two weeks. It's found now 45 devices. Now, web threat block, that's a red herring because this is part of what you get into when you do an initial test. And it did, quote, find a problem. It was one that showed up because of the test it ran. So, you know, that's life. Now, it says it's found four vulnerabilities. Anytime it finds a vulnerability, it's going to put something up on the top part of your screen. When it finds something, if it finds a new device on the network, if there's a vulnerability, it finds. So let's tap on that, and then we go into details. 
Now, it gives you the way it's finding the device. Now, I've got a ticket open with Trend Micro asking for some clarification because nowhere in the documentation or any information I can find can you find out the IP address of the alerts that you're given to know what kind of device. Because, for example, it's got what looks like it may be the same Raspberry Pi device it may be two different ones. I'm thinking it may be two different ones because of the one after it. Again, that, that's where it's a little bit course. Now, how many people are going to have multiple Raspberry Pis? Well, maybe more than you might think. So I've, I'm, I'm waiting for clarification, and I'll do another video once I get that information back. Then you've got uh, Blackmagic Design Device. Well, okay, I'm doing YouTube videos, so I've got two A10 Midis. I've got a HyperDeck Mini. I've got quite a bit of gear hitting so I'm not quite sure which device it's flagging and they're on the latest code so there's something they've picked up on again that that's a ticket that I'm going to have to get some clarification with but what it will tell you is when you go into that we'll tap on the directory transversal it gives you the vulnerability the CVE common vulnerability and I can't remember what the E is and it shows you where to go look at it. You can call contact support, or at this point, if you've got one of these devices, I'd say you're probably gonna be looking this up yourself. The first step on something like this that I would take is to go ahead and do the latest updates. If it's still showing after that, then it may be something where you need to get Trend Micro involved. But again, it's, it's kind of hard to tell with where they're not giving you uh, information as to the device. If we go recommended actions, it takes you out to their site where you can get more information, but without knowing what device they're finding, it may be not an issue for that device because none of my Raspberry Pis are public facing. They're all behind actually a double firewall. Not that I'm paranoid, but I know the world's out to get me. That at least gets you started. And it, it's, it's, this is better then the nothing will go all the way back here so action required you can see there's there's three other alerts we've got to go through anytime you want to see more details you can tap on show more and it will tell you the pcs that are the most active the one that had the web threat block well that was when i tested from the phone and that should have been in the earlier video top attack devices again that's kind of a red herring it does give you some degree of, of network usage, so it's at least another option. Now, if we go back here and if we tap on check devices, you can force another scan of the network. So anytime you're making changes, that's a good idea to, hey, let's run up the flagpole and see what salutes there. It's, I'd rather have a false positive within reason then find out that I've got a problem and then it never tells me. Now, occasionally you will get a pop-up on the phone if it sees a problem. So hopefully once we get this one uh, issue addressed with Trend Micro to find out, give me the IP address because if they're getting an alert, then they're seeing the packet and maybe they're just not looking for that IP address. But overall, this is a decent box to have. You've at least got support on it. So if you're not used to dealing in the world of intrusion prevention systems or, or IDS sensors, which are just read-only versions of IPS, it at least gives you an option. Now, if we tap on view report, then it's probably going to take us, and this is where it gets a little touchy on the phone. Let me pick up here, and hopefully I won't lose the signal out of the phone. There we go. I just had to tap on the way it wanted it. So you can see, the, the you can look at by family member, I've got just me involved at this point. I haven't turned anything loose, but you can see all the different devices get a sense for what kind of network traffic that they're they're generating, or, or not generating, but you're seeing the security events. And it shows you uh, most active by family member, by device. Now, this is where you start to get more of the, the devils in the, the details and at least you can get an idea of maybe if somebody's being a little too chatty on the network that it at least gives you some information to work with. So this is very much of something that has potential on the network. Uh, I'm going to be looking at doing voice control in a future video. Right now, I kind of want to get the 
the cobwebs uh, blown out to see what's going on. And if we go back into here, we can see you know from a network level who's generating most of the traffic. Uh, I've got let's say Roku Nine, which is actually the Roku Stream Bar, and it goes into de uh, details there as to how much who's using what kind of traffic. So it's it's nice to have that kind of information. Now, with the way this is in the network, is it going to give me total details? Well, at this point, if unless I was on a network tap, I'm, I'm not sure how it would. And, okay, so it is seeing two different Raspberry Pis from the way it looks here. But even with tapping on both the number, the icon, and the name of the device that it's discovering uh it's still not letting me in to see the ip so it, it acknowledges there's traffic there but i'd kind of like to have the ip address so this is very much of a learning situation it's worthwhile to consider because even when it's not that many people on your home network this is one more piece of information that you've got to work with so if they're does seem to be something strange showing up you've at least got a, an independent source to look at what's going on if you're watching this on youtube you're going to see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that youtube thinks you might be interested in if this video helps you or provides value please click on that like button thumbs up if you haven't already subscribed to the channel please click on subscribe now and enable notifications we'll see you in the next episode thanks for watching